Joining us right now is my brother from another mother. You know, my Jersey compadre. He is he is a talk show host uh, himself, extraordinaire. He has a TV show uh, on on uh, various... Uh, he does various things in the television realm, broadcaster. He also has a book on leadership, which we will tweet out. And he, he's also uh, he's interviewing the, the... He's doing a governor's thing tonight, right? Let me welcome to the show the one and only Steve Adubato. Karen, it is... Always my pleasure, not just to join you, but I just was listening to Kenyatta, and that was an absolutely compelling, powerful uh, segment, and I, and I thank you. Um, uh, everyone thanks you for that segment. Nah, it's an man, important it's... one, and you can't find it any place else. Well, you got to thank him for for living a life to, to even be that's worthy right. of, of having us talk to him. You know, he's out there doing things. But, you know, there's a lot of great stories. And that's our job as broadcasters, as journalists, to to, uh, you know, find the, the 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 folk that can inspire people and, and get people out of their pity parties. You know, if this man could spend 19 years in jail, come out with the spirit mm. that he has of joy. I mean, he's mm. joyful, you mm -hmm. know, optimistic. If he can come out and that's figure right. out how to make a life for himself, 19 years in prison. Come on. There's no excuse. There is not. In fact, I know we're supposed to be talking about the New Jersey governor's race, but the fact is we're also on our PBS series uh, doing uh, a series uh, doing a series of programs with ex-offenders and reacclimating into society and showing those success stories. So we're on the same track, Karen. No, we, well, we have to be. I mean, if if we talk about weak links, you know, and strengthening our weak links, we got to look at this prison industrial complex. No other nation incarcerates people at the rate that we do. And it's, it's horrific the way we, you know, then after they get out, blame them for not being successful. We give them $40 in a bus pass and say, why aren't you doing better? You know, it's like right. we have to be our brother's keepers. We have to care about the, the quote unquote least of us uh, if we that's truly right. are the nation that we say we are. And, you know, speaking of which, since since we are going to talk about the governor's race in New Jersey, even though this is a national show, because it does have national implications. But I do want to talk to you a little bit about um, leadership because you always, you know, bring a perspective and it's important. Do you understand, Steve Adubato, how this conversation around taking a knee got so misunderstood? Mm. Do you do you understand that it wasn't about disrespecting the flag or is this still an area of uh, confusion for a lot of people? Because it seems to be. Let me, let me tell you what I actually posted on this um, a couple of weeks ago, and I won't do it word for word, but here is a sentiment. I'm a Yankee fan. In the middle of the seventh inning, they play, uh, God bless them. I stand, whether I'm at the stadium or, as most cases, at home. I personally choose to stand. I've talked to our kids about what it means, okay? So it means a lot to me. Um, Pledge of Allegiance, I stand. But here's the thing, and here's the part that I think is missing for a lot of people. The thing that makes me so proud of this country, one of the things, even though we're falling short in so many ways, one of the things that makes me so proud of our country is that you can take a knee. You can opt to do whatever you choose to do, um, respectfully during the national anthem, but not stand. And so the idea of compelling, forcing, putting it literally a financial gun to his head and telling him you don't, you don't stand, you don't play, you don't get paid. To me, that is the antithesis of what this country was founded on, and that is not something that I believe makes us great. In fact, we should be embarrassed. And that came directly from the White House to Jerry Jones, um, because the president has a direct relationship with Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones opted to capitulate, and I think he's doing the wrong thing, and it doesn't make him more patriotic than anyone else. And if John McCain, who served almost seven years as a prisoner of war, right. said, listen, what makes us great is your ability to take a knee, then I would go with John McCain's sense of patriotism over Donald Trump's or Jerry Jones. Five five deferments. So so why is this a thing? You know, because to me it's so simple. You know, you articulated it. And it's not simple. It, it's not simple. It, see, see, it's simple to you. Sorry for interrupting. Simple to you. Simple to me because we have a sense of of what patriotism means to us. Now I'm not saying I'm right, but I also there are an awful lot of friends of mine who are so pissed off that players are taking a knee that they're refusing to watch games. Now, in New York, where we are, it doesn't matter because the Giants suck. Right. But the, 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 the thing is, the bottom line for a lot of people is they believe it's actually un-American. And so telling them that that is part of what makes America great, they get angry. It's not a conversation. It's like having a conversation about the election. You can't do it. You can't have but a conversation with... Steve, it's, it's so hypocritical. You know, they're so concerned about a knee, but not concerned about people being murdered 
uh, shot in the back. There was a man shot in the back last week in t- Tennessee. Like, that should be out. They're not outraged about that, but they want me to be outraged about, you know, they want to be outraged about somebody taking a knee to a piece of fabric when people are not having equal justice in this country. Why isn't that part of the conversation? I understand why it's not, but you are you have friends who are yeah, angry. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you have and, fr- and, 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 and it's race. And, it's, and here's the thing. Because all the polls are making it very clear that there's a fault line here and that it's not the, it's not the Hillary uh, uh, Trump fault line in terms of race. It's not that clear cut. But the reality is the vast majority of those who are angry at the players and are protesting the protest are disproportionately. I mean, the vast majority are white and a h- very high disproportionate well, percentage of African-Americans are saying they get it. They understand. Now, my interpretation is that we're living totally different realities. And so when Dick, uh, excuse me, um, uh, I think his name is Mike Dick, a former yeah, great Mike player, mm-hmm. he was a, mm-hmm. Mike Dick, uh, former coach of the uh, Bears, uh, the Bears mm-hmm. comes out and says, quote, I don't understand this because there has not been racism or oppression against African-Americans in the last 100 years. I'm asking, did he know what the 1964 Civil Rights Act, did, did he understand what Voting Rights Act, did he understand lynchings? I don't know what he's talking about. My point is, he doesn't see it. Millions of others don't see it, so they don't get it. So therefore, if they don't get it, why should your experience be any different than mine? But the reality is, it is. So how do we get? And this is the the one million, you know, hundred million dollar question. Right. I think if if you can answer this, sir, you win a hundred million dollars. How do we get people to see it? You know, Karen, you and I talked about this. I, you were, by the way, it was one of the. When I'm, I'm not saying this to kiss your butt because you're my friend and I love doing your show. But when you came and did my show, I never feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm having a conversation with a friend whom I respect, even if I don't happen to see things the way you do or disagree with something you say. That is so opposite. There's so, um, it's just not the norm. And so my answer to you is I'm not being negative about this or a pessimist. I'm convinced of this though, that a high percentage of people have dug their heels in and they're talking past each other and don't give and they're not going to get it uh give a damn about what you're right. saying or what i'm saying so we 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 keep write doing it off? what we're we, doing with yeah, the people okay. we can no okay. no karen we keep doing what we can do with the people we can do it with and some are on the fence and some are in a gray area and you got to try to find them and talk to them but the others i'm telling you and some of them are family you can't in fact it's counterproductive okay. find the people and i want to believe there are more than some think there are who you can talk to, but to try to talk sense into others. Like that's like I could sit with Donald Trump and say, Mr. President, here are some reasons why you've, you've hurt certain people and why that's a pro-. like, he's going to go, Oh, Steve, you wrote about leadership. I'm listening to you because he's, he's who he is. And he's, you know, you don't have to be 71 to have your heels set in. Right. Right. We're talking with Steve Adubato, the great Steve Adubato, broadcaster, author, motivational speaker. Uh, He's a leader. He wrote a whole book about leadership as well. Uh, Leader in his community, father, great father. Um, You're going to be interviewing, I guess, or we're we're holding a a debate. No, we did it. We did it. You did it already. When when is it airing? We did the interview. It's airing tomorrow night on CBS stations in the New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia region. Uh, I sat down with both Ambassador Phil Murphy, the Democrat, former Goldman Sachs executive, uh, big Democratic fundraiser for many years, close to President Obama, and the lieutenant governor, the Republican candidate, Kim Guadano, who, uh, as most people may know, um, she's been with the Chris Chris Christie administration for the past eight years. And um, listen, normally in a blue state like New Jersey, a Democrat will get elected. But I would say Donald Trump um, and, and what he is doing or not doing and the impact he's having on this race is significant in many ways. Is it? Is it really? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean I, you yeah, know, because Jersey, we, we've talked about this before. Uh, Jersey would have a Christy Todd Whitman of Florio. Jersey will have a Tom Kane and then a McGreevy. You know, Jersey does strange things. And then we get a Chris Christie, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I'm not a Corzine. We're, we're, we're schizophrenic like that. New York is the same, right. you know. So is, is it a Trump impact? You know, and what impact will Trump have on this Jersey election? And and you think it, it's going to happen throughout the country with governor's races? I do. And in fact, um, what you got in New Jersey, now remember, New Jersey and Virginia, the only two states in the nation after a presidential election that have a, a governor's race. So listen, when I interviewed uh, Ambassador Murphy and Lieutenant Governor Gridano, one of the things I asked him was, look, this is what the president is saying on DACA. 
today. I don't know what the heck he's going to say in the next 10 hours. But at the time when I interviewed them, I said, what do you do about all the dreamers? The tens of thousands of dreamers in New Jersey. What are you going to do with them if the president and the attorney general do this, this, and this? I put the, the screws to them on that. And believe it or not, the Republican candidate Kim Giordano on that issue and on potentially repealing and so-called replacing Obamacare, she was absolutely dead set against the Republican president, Donald Trump. And so when I say he's having an impact, he's forcing these candidates. And by the way, on the national anthem, he's going to force that issue as well. Right. They're going to have to decide where they are on that. So issues that are very highly emotional and people can try to understand and have feelings about have the that has the potential to impact this race on a very visceral level. Maybe Trump has been a good thing in, in the sense that it has forced people to have to stand up or show themselves, which is something that I think for 50 years people have been hiding out in the corners and the shadows. Now we are getting to see people. The line is drawn in the sand. Did that come out of, of this debate, uh, this interview that you did with, with these two yeah. gubernatorial candidates from New Jersey? Uh, Karen, I believe it did because I, I, did, I expected Ambassador Murphy um, and by the way, when I interviewed Ambassador Murphy, remember, he was an ambassador to Germany. And I'll tell you something. Five months ago when I interviewed him before the Democratic primary, talk about taking a stand. He said something that blew me away. I said, uh, what is your greatest concern about President Trump? And this was earlier on. He's, look, I was the ambassador to Germany. And he brings up Hitler. And he says, look, I saw what can happen when people follow someone who um, speaks in a certain way, who plays to people's fears, who tries to divide – and I said, Ambassador, are you making the comparison? He said, yes, I am. Wow. Now, what I'm trying to get at is he didn't say he's that guy. He said things happened in Germany that scare the heck out of me, and I see some of those things happening now. Mm. That's powerful. That's powerful. So while there are tax, taxes are an issue, prop, uh, property taxes, the pension crisis, our infrastructure is falling down, there's more of a moral question. And, and, and Kim Gordana, who I've known a long time, I think she's – appalled by President Trump, but she has to be more direct and clear in some of her statements, but she's afraid that she's not going to get money from the National Republican Party because he controls a lot of that. And so to me, you got to stand up. It's not Democrat or Republican. It's are you going to stand up for what's right or wrong? So when you see someone like Corker uh, stand up. Stood up. Stood up. Yeah. Or or Kasich, who's been standing up. uh, You know, political partisanship aside, this is about America at the end of the day. And we have to, you know, show what we are made of. You know, uh, is this is this the, the way we want our nation to go? Um, give me a, give me a surprise that came out of this interview. Were you surprised by anything? Yeah, you, you, know, you know what? Why do you ask me questions that have me sitting here trying to really <laughs> rack my brain right now? That, that's what makes it's, you use. So it's here's the all, thing. It's my I job. would say the biggest surprise, if you will, um, is that. The lieutenant governor, Kim Gordano, the Republican, as much as she wants some of that Republican money, was clear, dead set against President Trump on trying to repeal um, the Affordable Care Act because of tens, hundreds of thousands of New Jerseyans who are now covered who weren't before. On the dock issue, she was clear on that. Um, but the other thing is, I don't know if I call it surprising, but Ambassador Murphy is talking about doing a lot of things that are much more progressive than the previous administration. And the biggest challenge for him is going to be how to pay for mm. free college tuition on, for county colleges. And that's you, what he's talking about. Free professor, you know, mm. well, mm. Yeah, he's talking about free tuition. If you go to a community slash county college, um, it looks like it's going to be about $200 million. Now that's, to me, that's not just the New Jersey issue. It's do you believe that that is the Something. role of government to right. do that? And they, and just so when I asked where you're going to pay for it, it's not a surprise, but he said, we need to tax, millionaires more and i said okay what happens if they leave and establish residence in florida you know you know cheaper state to be in um that's going to be a question that he's going to have to answer more directly and it's going to be challenging for people because where's the money going to come from it's not just that you think it's the right thing to do where's the cash well we're going to check this out it's tomorrow pbs pbs tomorrow on nj pbs the nj tv which is a pbs station uh, as well as whyy in philadelphia and south jersey um and it's, it's going to be good stuff all right. Well, of course, because you're doing it. Steve Adubato, we appreciate you. I appreciate you, Karen. All Thanks right. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Adubato, check out uh, him on Twitter. And we're going to tweet out all of his information, so follow us at SXM Urban View because that's what we do.